I'm Sean. This is who? We are the Courageous Frights, back once again for another week of movie news yes. and gaming news. Yes, so that is we're true. starting this week with Alien Romulus. Mm -hmm. So this is an article talking about the new Alien film. And uh, we talked about this before. We've been talking about this, yeah. actually. But uh, I guess it was a rumor that the title was Alien Romulus, but now it's confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> but the main reason why I wanted to bring this up is we now have a solid launch uh, release date, mm -hmm. August 16th, 2024. And this is coming to theaters. Okay, so it's going to theaters. This is a... Is this made by Disney? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it used to be a Fox property. Okay. So, the only other thing we really know about is it's supposed to slot in between the first movie and the second movie. Oh, good. So, it's in that continuity. There's, a uh, was it 57 years between Alien 1 and 2? Yeah. So, there's a lot of kind of leeway you can do there. And, uh, so Fede Alvarez was the director of the Evil Dead remake. Yeah, I've read that. There's, like, a little thing in the coat, uh, apparently... Roto Sagos made some co-wrote the script. I don't know if they're covering this or not, but mm. if that is the case, that'd be pretty decent. <laughs> yeah. I know the first Evil that remake of Evil Dead was really good. Yeah, it was pretty decent. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. And then, of course, there's also an Alien TV series that we talked about earlier that is before any of this. And it's like around the time of Prometheus, but it seems mm -hmm. to be ignoring Prometheus. It's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's our alien news. Now yes. we're moving on to Jurassic World. So we didn't get to talk about this. We just announced the Jurassic World movie. Yeah. But uh, during the week, David Leach was hired to direct, and uh, now he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. He was <laughs> hired to direct, and then just disappeared. David Leach, who, of course, was the, the other director of John Wick. Yeah. Who went on to do Bullet Train, Deadpool 2, and Atomic Blonde. Mm -hmm. uh, he apparently walked out of the talks, so... <laughs> <laughs> Just walked out. <laughs> so David Cope, or however you say his name, is writing this, who is the original screenwriter for the first Jurassic Park, as well as The Lost World. And that's the promising thing. So mm -hmm. we have somebody from the original two films writing the movie. But it would have been pretty cool to get David Leach. I mean, he is a pretty decent action director. But uh, I guess that's not happening. And this was also revealed to have a release date, July 2nd, 2025. Which I strongly doubt. Yeah, if they don't have a director. There's no director, and the script hasn't been finished yet. Yeah, before. they're probably in, like, midway point of the script, so... Yeah. I don't know if that's a good idea. That's probably going to change. <laughs> yeah. And then also here, which I didn't realize till now, Franchise will also return with Jurassic World Chaos Theory... Which is apparently an animated series on Netflix. Oh, okay. So, there has been... I don't know how many seasons of Camp Cretaceous, which was also the Netflix... Is that like a, is that like a kid show? Or it's is... supposed to be for kids, but I know okay. a lot of people actually like it and said it's not bad. Yeah, because like Camp Cretaceous just sounds like something from like a kid show. I was yeah, like... yeah, Camp Cretaceous. Yeah, it's, uh, it's supposed to be a kid show, but I don't think it's like... I mean, it's maybe like the Clone Wars yeah. or something, where it's like four kids, but... Not like yeah. Kids. So yeah, and then we got a new show, Chaos Theory, which I don't know anything about, but uh, stay tuned for that. It's I chaos. Guess. It's chaos theory. It's about Ian Malcolm. Yes. <laughs> the day to day trials and tribulations of Ian Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> and so moving on to I guess more Netflix news, which I didn't know we were gonna have Netflix news earlier than i thought but. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so korean live action parasite show reveals april to june run on netflix so this is uh maybe so confusingly to some not at all connected to the parasite korean movie that won a bunch of oscars yeah. a couple years back <laughs> this is actually connected to the japanese anime and manga that was, it's sort of like the thing. It's basically like an alien invasion of the Earth and the parasites take over the brain and then they sort of take over the whole body. Yeah. And they can transform parts of the body into like tentacle weapons and stuff. It's actually probably the basis for the later stages of the Plaga parasite in Resident Evil 4. So, like, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. 
I am a pretty big fan of the anime. I've never actually read the manga, but I do like the anime and I like the live action movies, which were both directed by Takashi Yamazaki. Who, yeah, that's uh, uh that is kind of interesting. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. I kind of want to see this since it's directed by him, just to yeah. see what it actually looks like. <laughs> right. So he, he, yeah, he did Godzilla minus one, of course. So yeah. It's pretty good, and um, this is of course a Korean adaptation of the manga, and it's probably ten to twelve episodes. I would assume. Yeah, if it's, I think it says was like April to June or something. Yeah, yeah April to June. April to June. And uh, the, it's supposed to be unrelated to the story, but it sounds basically like yeah. a rehash of the story. They probably changed a little bit, like the finding her missing younger sister is probably the change. Yeah, like that's a thing that seems new. The main character is a woman yeah. instead of a boy. Uh, it's in Korea instead of Japan. Yeah. There seems to be more focus on the task force that's battling the parasites. Because I remember in the anime... It's been a few years since I've seen it, but there was a task force that was supposed to be combating the parasites, mm-hmm. and uh, but they didn't seem to show up as real characters until like a few episodes before the show ended. Yeah. So that's probably yeah. that's probably their way of like dif- differentiating between the, the like the manga or something, to, and then this, right. or maybe the manga might actually have more of the. Gray. I'm sure they probably have more of the gray actually in the actual manga than the TV show. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, so the anime was like a typical run anime. I think it's like, like 24 episodes. Yeah. So it's like an average run. But yeah, I recommend both the anime and the live action movies. Mm-hmm. And I'll be checking this one out too. Cause I know, I think uh, the, anim- or the anime used to be on Netflix. I don't think they, I don't know if it still is or not, but that was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think I watched it like way back on like Crunchyroll or something. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that will definitely be keeping up to date on that. Yeah. All right, so this one's a Screen Rant article about Gremlins 3. <laughs> this is I just included this because it's kind of funny. Uh, Zach Galligan, who played Billy in the original Gremlins, and most of his career since seems to be uh, reminiscing about his days on the set of Gremlins. Yes. <laughs> he recently talked about the possibility of Gremlins 3, and somebody asked him if he thinks there'll be a live-action Gremlins 3 movie. And so his response to this is quite bizarre. (laughs) So that's why I wanted to cover it. So he says, I do. I can't really figure out why Warner Brothers would do two seasons, not one, but two seasons of the animated series and spend a lot of money on it unless there was some kind of end game. And usually the end game for a huge studio like Warner Brothers Discovery is a live-action film. A live-action film is always where you're going to make the most money. Super Mario Brothers just proved that. <laughs> that live-action Super Mario Bros. movie. The, the end game probably will be, I'm hoping, a third film. I don't think it'll be a reboot, though, because Chris Columbus has nixed that idea. He owns part of the rights. All right, so let's break this down. He says, uh, I can't really figure out why Warner Bros. would do two seasons, not one. But two seasons. Problem with that is there only was one season. <laughs> yeah, he's like, of, uh, he's making up seasons. Yeah, so we're talking about this show down here. This is Secret of the Mogwai that is on uh, Max. I actually didn't watch it, but I don't know if it's good or not. It had a cool, like, I, premise. I know this animation looks like it's that 3 yeah, animation thing. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of the animation, but I like the idea. It's supposed to be yeah. set in, like, 1920s China. And it, yeah, that is kind of interesting. It follows uh, Mr. Wing, the guy that ran the shop mm-hmm. that Gizmo was bought at. And it's I guess it covers like other Chinese creatures too, not just the Mogwai. So it's like almost like Shang-Chi in a way. Yeah. Like there's like a kind of a fairy world or something where there's different creatures in another world. So that adds a whole bunch of mythos to the Gremlins universe. But... To my knowledge, there's there definitely wasn't a second season. <laughs> I don't know if it was greenlit and Warner Brothers hasn't announced it yet, and maybe Zach heard about it in the pipeline somewhere. I don't know where he's getting this information about a second season, but that's that's apparently happening. Yeah. <laughs> or not, I don't know. And then the stuff about a live action Mario Brothers movie proving 
that live action is the best way to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, uh, the live action Mario Brothers movie was the reason why Nintendo didn't make another film for yeah. 30 years. 30 years <laughs> later. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Zach thinks that Chris Pratt actually looks like Mario or... He looks like, uh, who was that guy that played in the first movie or whatever, in the original one? Oh, uh, Bob Hoskins. Yeah, Bob Hoskins. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about here. I think he may be revealing early signs of dementia. Yeah, <laughs> could possibly be. <laughs> but I had to talk about this because if you followed us for a long time, you'll know that Gremlins 3 was one of our long-standing jokes on this show. Yeah. Channel. Like, it's never going to happen, along with Silent Hill 2. Yeah, Silent Hill 2, which that one is... Which is happening. Coming. Maybe. Sometimes. It's slowly coming. Yeah. They just have to make a couple more trailers. Fix up the graphics and... Give us some more combat trailers. Yeah, combat trailers. <laughs> That's what people remember from Silent people Hill People love Silent Hill 2 combat. Oh, yeah. All right, so moving on. Highlander reboot with Henry Cavill will be John Wick director's next film. So we already talked about David Leach for the week, so here's our Chad Stahelski news for the week. Yes. Uh, so Chad apparently is doing Highlander next. So I guess, I don't know what that means for Ghost of Tsushima, but... Yeah, I'm kind of wondering the reason why they're doing this first is probably because Cobble's probably trying to get his Warcraft thing going. Warhammer thing? Yeah, the Warhammer thing. So he's probably yeah. trying to get that done, so they probably need to get this out of here. That way he can like, focus on that. That's probably the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. Like, uh, seeing like John Wick-style action in the Highlander universe Yeah, is pretty cool. They are talking about potentially making this a franchise again. Yeah. Which I'd be for that because, like, Highlander is a franchise. It's just a franchise that only has one good movie. Yeah. There's, like, four or five sequels, but they're all garbage for the most part. And then there was a TV show that's fairly well liked. There was yeah. also an anime, like, an animated movie that was pretty decent. Yeah. But, uh, like, here got me thinking this picture down here of Ramirez and uh, Connor. I was wondering who. They would get for Ramirez, assuming it's the same plot. Yeah. Somebody I saw in some other article or something suggested Pierce Brosnan. And I that, that would was, be a good choice. That was pretty cool. Especially how he, especially since I was, did Pierce Brosnan does he does he do a lot of acting still or no? Oh yeah, he's in a lot of stuff. Okay, because I remember the last thing I watched him was in was Black Adam, and he did a pretty decent job in that. Yeah, he, he was good in that. No, Pierce is doing a lot of stuff, but it would be kind of cool to have another former James Bond yeah be like the mentor yeah that would be a good a good callback because it'd be like because <laughs> yeah. of uh, Sean Connery but yeah so yeah I don't know I think this is a pretty good idea yeah I can't see this being terrible no so if Stokelski's doing it it's probably not going to be terrible <laughs> no I wouldn't think so yeah and Pierce Brosnan I was re recently like re-watched something because I vaguely remember him having a sword fight in one of the James Bond movies. And I think it was like Die Another Day. Or yeah. Like the really bad one. <laughs> but um, the sword fight was even more epic than I remembered. I remembered it just being basic fencing. Yeah. But it ended up going through like three or four different sword styles and different combat and stuff. And it was like, I could see Islander being like that on a grander scale. Yeah. So yeah. That would be kind of, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Because yeah, I, I definitely have to focus on the sh sword fighting in this show and movie. Yeah, because we had a bit of sword play in, like, the John Wick movies, especially mm -hmm. the most recent one. But having a movie that's primarily focused on sword fighting yeah. would be pretty cool. Yeah. Alright, so then we have another bloody disgusting article, The Terror, Devil, and Silver. So, The Terror is an AMC anthology horror series. There's been two seasons. Mm-hmm. The first season came out in 2018. It was based on a book. Second season came out in 2019. It was based on nothing. And then, then the most recent season was just announced as coming out, I think, next year. So there's like six years between two and three. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't think this was going to happen again, but apparently it is. Because AMC, they are AMC owns. Do they own uh, Shutter? Is that yes? They, oh, okay. Yeah, they own Shutter. They've done, you know, they've done Walking Dead. And stuff, yeah. So they have done a lot of horror shows. Yeah. So the first season of Terror was about Northwest Passage in the eighteen forties, mm -hmm. and it had like Inuit mythology and 
like some kind of bear monster. Mm-hmm. The second season was about like a vengeful ghost in a Japanese internment camp during World War Two. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. And then this new season, I guess, is supposed to be about potentially demonic stuff in a psych ward. So each one's completely different. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that with American Horror Stories. I think they do that same thing with every season. It's different. Yeah. But it has like an overarching theme. Right. Which kind of seems like this is how this show is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, coming 2025. Yeah. So I just thought it was cool because it's a series I thought was never going to return. Yeah. Even though it's a series, you don't necessarily have to have a return. You can just make another anthology thing. Yeah. And not make it to terror. But I guess they're continuing with that name. So, continuing with the horror stuff, we got a Evil Dead spinoff announced. Yes. So, so Sebastian Vanacek is tapped yes. to helm the Evil Dead spin. So, he seems like the Sebastian... Like, I think we were looking up to, like, to see this guy's like, resume before yeah. we did the podcast here. He didn't sound like he did too much. He did a couple of shorts like Crocs, Mayday, and 299-792-458-MS. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Yeah, but, but his, mm. he did make a movie last yeah. year. Infested. Yes. Which must it's like a French movie. Yeah, it's a French movie about spiders like overrunning a like apartment building yeah. or something, which I did actually hear about this movie and it looks good. Like it, it has pretty high marks. Yeah, it, it looks like I said it won Best Picture and Best Director in North American Premiere yeah, at the Fantastic, Fantastic Fest. Fest. Yeah. So, so That sounds kinda interesting. Yeah, residents of a rundown French apartment building battle against an army of deadly, rapidly reproducing spiders. Yeah. Almost sounds like, like arachnophobia. Or yeah, it does definitely has that feel. at least that premise. So yeah, I, I, I'll have to check that one out, but yeah, I'm always interested in some new Evil Dead. Yeah, especially if it's like that, because it's about like something rapidly reproducing and just keeps coming type of thing, yeah, which I kind of follows evil that goodness. Evil Dead type of thing. So, like I said, I don't know who this director is really, so I don't... <laughs> well, he's only had, like, one film. Yeah. So he's done a bunch of shorts, I guess. So, yeah, that could definitely work. It seems like maybe they're going and picking European filmmakers. Yeah. Because the la- Evil Dead Rise was Lee Cronin, who's an Irish filmmaker. Yeah. And um, this Vanacek guy is a uh, French filmmaker. Yeah, French. So... Yeah. And I kind of wonder if, if it's going to be like this, if he's picking a new director altogether, are they guys going to do it? Is it going to be a direct sequel from that last movie, Arise? Or is it going to be maybe like a different movie altogether? It's probably just going to be its own thing. Because okay. it does say spin off. Oh, so spin off. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm assuming it's going to be almost like The Terror. Yeah. Where every season's a different story. I'm going to guess all of these Evil Dead movies are like loosely connected yeah. in a wider. Because they did just say, I think Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi recently talked about maybe a year or two ago talked yeah. about getting together and like creating a shared universe yeah that's probably the way to do it so they're probably all connected in the same universe but individual stories that are maybe based on connected. which i guess which necronomicon or something yeah, they might be a little bit different yeah Necronomicons <laughs> floating around so they could be like different things maybe have different types of uh deadites or something yeah probably and I'm assuming Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi are on board for, like, producing or something. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to look into. Mm-hmm. All right, so then you have a Deadline article. Yeah, the next one I have here is, uh, this is just a little tidbit, I guess. Deadpool co-creator Rob Liefeld, which if you read comics back in the 90s, he was probably the, like, biggest artist. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he actually wrote his comics or anything like that, but, or maybe he did. He probably did. But I guess he is finally retiring from the Marvel character after 33 years. So I don't know if he's actually retiring altogether, but I guess he is retiring from Deadpool. So that's kind of interesting. I wonder if he's probably going to be in the new movie. Probably they'll probably have him like in the new movie somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, probably, especially since Stan Lee passed away. They may start like doing cameos like they did used to do with Stan Lee. Yeah, just put like him because he technically is the creator of Deadpool. Yeah. Or, like the co-creator of Deadpool, so... That's kind of interesting. It's like after thirty three years of working one character, yeah, I'd probably want to change. I know he made he made Cable as well. He's actually the creator of Cable. Yeah. So like a lot of times in the nineties, he had that weird art style where it's like the big muscle bound guy type of thing with like 
straps and everything else. Yeah. That's probably Rob Lightfill. <laughs> so, yeah. but that's kind of just like a little just tidbit of the main guy just retiring. So, I guess we're to the next one here. Yeah, moving on, to Variety article. The Variety here. Okay, so we have uh, Denzel Washington and Spike Lee are reuniting to make a Kurosawa film, High and Low. With A24 and Apple, which I think they said they're going to release it on A24, like in theaters first, and before the global launch on Apple TV+. Plus. Yeah, Apple's but. been doing that. I think Napoleon was an example of Oh, that. yeah. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon, I think, might have been that way. Oh, is that, is that an Apple TV movie? Yeah, it's oh, on I didn't Apple release it. Now, okay. So it, so it comes out in theaters, and then like, I don't know, like three months later, it goes to Apple. Okay. So that's probably what they're doing here. And then we have this movie, which... I guess High and Low was actually one of, wasn't that one of uh, Kurosawa's bigger movies, I believe? Well. Maybe. I mean, sort of. It's different. Yeah. Kurosawa is typically associated with samurai yeah. films. High and Low is like a present day film. It's like a crime drama about like, it's almost like Ransom. Yeah. Where there's, uh, Toshiro Mifune plays like a businessman, runs a company or something, and uh, Tatsuya Nakadai is the detective mm-hmm. trying to find the kidnapper. So it's very different. It's the same typical actors that you had and everything. But yeah. It's a different setting for them. Yeah. So eh, that's kind of interesting. I guess that's a high and low would probably be good. But I don't know. Is, is crime, the crime drama, is that really even popular nowadays? Is that like yeah, a not probably, popular genre anymore? I, don't know. I feel like it probably is because there's a whole lot of crime shows. Yeah, that's true. On TV. So yeah, probably. Yeah, and Denzel Washington's a pretty big name actor, so... Yeah, Denzel Washington's name's been thrown around a lot. Yeah, he's, like, in a lot of things lately. Like, uh, like, was it, like... Was it Equalizer came out, or what was that movie that just yeah, came out? Yeah, Equalizer came out recently, but he was also recently cast, I think, to play Hannibal, the... Hannibal Barca, the... Guy oh, that R- yeah. Rob Hannibal <laughs> so, the, during the Punic Wars, uh, for, like, Netflix or something. Oh, okay. And I don't know how far in development that is. Yeah, so... I guess Denzel's making a comeback, I guess. <laughs> Which yeah. he probably was never go away, but it seems like he is. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's always good. Yeah. And then uh, we got some more Predator news. So Badlands is a new Predator movie from Dan Trachtenberg, who directed Prey. Mm-hmm. So this one is... We don't know much about We don't know anything about it. Really. Yeah. But uh, I guess the rumors are... Some other information that came out since is that it's supposed to be set in the near future. So I wasn't quite sure because, like, when I heard the name Badlands, I was like, I wondered if it was another Native American yeah. thing. Because they could have done, like, the Badlands, at least in the United States, when you think of the Badlands, you think of, like, the Dakotas yeah. and stuff. And there's a nation called the Lakota Sioux yeah. that are in that area. And so I was wondering if it was going to have to do with, like, like the age with Custer and all that kind of stuff. That's what I kind of thought. I kind of thought but, maybe like either a Western or something, or maybe even even like something like along those lines. Right, but now they're saying it's a near future yeah. setting. So if it still deals with those Badlands, it still could be about Native Americans. Yeah. And just in the near future, it's supposed to have another female protagonist. Yeah. So if you hated Prey because <laughs> there was a woman in it, then. I'm uh, so I'm sure <laughs> can't watch this I guess <laughs> but um yeah th- this does sound interesting I personally liked Prey yeah I did too I like Dan Trachtenberg he did um in my opinion the better Cloverfield movie the 10 Cloverfield Lane mm-hmm. so I'll be interested in checking this one out there's yeah. also I think a sequel to Prey still in development on top of this. Oh, so like an, another sequel as well. Okay. Yeah, and this one I think will be a theatrical release or is at least <laughs> They should. <laughs> yeah, because they screwed up last time by not doing that. Yeah. yeah they, they definitely should at this point. They, hopefully well, Disney learned their lesson. Well, Alien Romulus right. is a theatrical release, so I yeah. don't see why you'd be putting Alien movies in the theater but not putting Predator movies. Because Predator can only be on Hulu. They're kind of That's the it. same brand. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's it. All right. So then Collider, your most anticipated film of the year. Yes. <laughs> Imaginary. So this little bear thing is getting the PG-13 rating. So I guess Imaginary is about a like a person that has like an imaginary friend or this bear is like his imaginary friend or something. Yeah. And it like 
the imaginary creatures are, like, killing you or something like that. So, it, from the trailer, kind of looked like it was a rated... Like, to me, it kind of looked like it was a rated R movie or could be, but apparently they got the PG-13 rating, which... It seems like a lot of... This type of movie probably would fo- probably would follow more of a PG-13 because of the premise. Oh, yeah. Well, I like the subheading they have up at the top where it's like, you can try to imagine the scary <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that is true. <laughs> well, the thing with this, though, is I wonder if they're... I don't... This is not going to be the same level of success as... No. Megan. They, yeah. They're saying it's trying to compete with Megan. There's nothing in that trailer that's viral. No. Megan so, had the viral dance, and people watched it because yeah. of that reason. The one thing I think maybe connected to Megan is I wonder if there is an R-rated cut of this film. Oh, yeah. And they shaved down a bit to get that PG-13 rating. Yeah, that could possibly be the case. They did do that with Megan. Yeah, because Megan had the R-rated cut, which just kind of extended out some of the scenes. Is that what it did? Yeah, it's just some... The kills are extended. There's more yeah. swearing. That's oh, sorry, sorry. That's pretty much it. Great. Because I watched the the extended cut recently, and it's yeah. like maybe twenty seconds longer. <laughs> twenty so, seconds. There yeah, you go. All it did literally nice. was just where the blood splatter got cut away. They showed it, and they dropped more f bombs. Is Bombhouse normally known for their PG thirteen movies, or they mostly have rated R? Is that it's a mix? It's a mix. Okay, they've done both. Okay. The PG thirteen horror doesn't necessarily. I mean, everybody just assumes they hear PG thirteen horror and they're like, "Oh, it sucks." Yeah. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna suck. Yeah, it, I guess it depends on what they do with it. It could definitely mean it sucks. Yeah, but it yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean. <laughs> so it says, uh, "Yeah, Blumhouse strong track record in horror genre and plans to release more films this year, including a remake of Speak No Evil." I don't think I've even. Did they seen supposed anything to... about that? Yeah, were they supposed to make one? <laughs> and a reboot of Wolfman, which we did briefly talk about. Yeah. So, that one I'm excited for because I, I always like a werewolf movie. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what goes on with Yeah, this. we'll see what it happens. Be all right. We'll probably check it out. Yeah, because that's... Yeah, because we'll definitely probably check this one out when it comes out. Yeah. They had one movie out this year already, but it was just um, Wyatt Russell in a haunted swimming pool. <laughs> haunted swimming pool? <laughs> We'll probably watch it if it goes to streaming, <laughs> but I forgot completely about yeah, it. Yeah, I think so, because we haven't really seen too many movies this year, at least in the theater. We haven't watched anything this year, I don't think. Yeah. We watched Godzilla Minus One like five times. Yeah, right? that was like it. Uh, so, now we got a Goosebumps Yeah, Goosebumps, article. which... Goosebumps, the first first one came out on Disney+, Plus, I believe. Yeah. Uh, when, did, when did that come out? I don't even know when season one actually came out. Last year. Last year, Okay. So I guess they are just renewed it for the for this year, but it currently has a twist. So the twist is it's a brand new story setting and cast. So it's not I guess it's not connected to the first one at all. So it's almost like the terror. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> like the terror. Or like unrelated stories. I thought if he said it was what a twist, I yeah. thought it was going to be in my show. <laughs> what a what a twist he'll be there. But as kind of a Goosebumps has a lot of stories to go for because none of the Goosebumps stories are actually connected. If I remember correctly, except a couple, a couple of them are like exten- like I think sequels. there's a loose universe, but it's not like explicit. Yeah, it has like Slappy or whatever doll yeah, thing his name is. Like I think that. it's Slappy. But I guess that is a good thing. I guess they don't really have to be connected yeah. because you can just do whatever with yeah. Goosebumps. I think that's like, I think um, Netflix was potentially talking at least at one point about doing another season of. Uh, Fear Street. Fear Street, yeah. And that would probably be the same idea. Yeah, okay, yeah, probably. Because Fear Street was connected. All three movies were in the same timeline. Yeah. But they could do Fear Street Season 2 and do the same sort of thing and have it not connected to the first season at all. Okay, yeah, that's probably what they could do. I'd just be like a, a couple different things going on. Yeah. And may follow like a different like uh, theme or something. All right, so then we've got uh, legal updates. Yeah, legal I updates. Guess. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first one is uh, Gina Carano. So we've heard her. She got fired from Disney. Yeah, years ago. Years ago because of uh, some of her tweets and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. we talked about this, like, when it first happened. Yeah, when it first happened. It was, like, whatever, three, four years ago. Yeah, I said uh, 2021 was when, yeah, at least when, the, when she got fired. So I guess she is actually getting, or she just filed a suit in California federal court alleging wrongful termination and discrimination, and as well as a man, the court should force Lucasfilm to recast her 
and pay at least seventy five thousand punitive damage. But that's a really that's a fairly low number. Yeah, seventy five thousand is reasonable. Yeah, there um, some people were like saying that she had outrageous demands here. Yeah, and it's like. Eh. 75, Maybe is not the part of yeah no it's not. <laughs> uh, Reese's was apparently attempted to be sued recently because the the actual Reese's peanut butter cups yeah. don't exactly resemble oh, the geez. things on the packaging great and that lawsuit was for five million dollars uh, yeah. so, <laughs> yes so seventy five thousand is not unreasonable however the thing about being reinstated into Like back into the show. Yeah, I don't know if they would do that. Yeah, because I think that's too far. I think that's Mandalorian. That's Mandalorian season one or two. I guess she was two. in season two. Yeah, she was in two. She was supposed to have the spinoff show, and that's oh uh, like, yeah kind of fell apart because she was supposed to be in uh, whatever that one was called, Rangers. Yeah, or Rangers of or something. yeah something like that. Yeah, that was basically her show, and then they got rid of her. Yeah. So yeah, it it I don't know. Like, I'm not quite sure. At first glance, it seems like a joke. Yeah. But there might be enough of a case here. Yeah, I think it's almost way, the way this damage, punitive damage thing is, it's almost like it's more of a, more about principle, more than the actual, like, lawsuit. Because I know yeah, they always talk about, like, low yeah, yeah, it's almost, they always talk about, like, I guess, wokeism and all this other stuff in hollywood well that's what this is about yeah you know? this it seems like it's more about that compared to like what the actual right. content is like we said this happened to her three years ago yeah elon musk is the one behind yeah. this because elon musk basically talking about woke whatever yeah he basically made a statement i guess that his lawyers at x or whatever would be pursuing anybody who got canceled yeah. by woke culture or yeah. what have you and uh, that's kind of where this stemmed from. Because I think she initially tweeted as a joke almost. Mm -hmm. I think my case applies. Yeah. <laughs> and then she got a bunch of likes and people retweeted and all that stuff. And then I guess it moved forward. Yeah, she probably like, probably, I'm sure Elon Musk's lawyers got a hold of her. <laughs> yeah. I was like, here, show us what you got. Yeah, and so then... she's, she, I guess she sent them a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. That she had saved over time. And then they were like, oh, I think there's a case here. Yeah. Or something. So that's what's going on. So that's, I So, guess, yeah, it's, uh, I guess we'll have to see because this is just, this just happened. I don't know what this day this was. It happened earlier this week. Yeah, earlier this week. And, and normally, yeah, normally, uh, I guess once this California, they'll have the rule that they want to even do the case at all or not. But right. we'll see what happens because I guess this, this could lead to something else, <laughs> depending on the ruling, I guess. Yeah. But, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So that's kind of our coverage of that about as yeah. non yeah yeah non yeah non political. <laughs> just like the very basics of that's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys want to fight it out in the comments section, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We'll probably not respond. <laughs> yeah, probably not respond. <laughs> so the next thing, another not really a legal thing, yeah, but an interesting, interesting thing, topic. which this could be something with. The way Hollywood operates, but I know I know Warner Brothers does this a lot, but Warner yeah. Brothers is like the main culprit for yeah. this shit. But I guess uh, Coyote versus Acme. I know like the some of the backstory is um, Coyote versus Acme was made by I think by James Gunn wrote it, wrote it or something like that. Yeah, James Gunn like two other guys wrote it. Yeah, right? and uh, it's about Wally Coyote suing the Acme Corporation for Which wrongful. A, honestly, a funny. <laughs> yeah, that's premise. a pretty funny premise. Uh, I guess they had this movie was already made, so this movie's done. Like, it could be going to theaters, like, tomorrow if they really wanted to. Right, if they actually wanted to make some money off of it. But Disney, or not Disney, but uh, Warner, Brothers. Warner Brothers, what they've been doing lately is they've been basically taking their movies and just writing tax write-offs for them because they think they can't get money back for it. Have a fraction of the cost yeah. it made to, it, it yeah. cost <laughs> to make the film. I think the biggest one was Batgirl. I know a lot of people, when, I, when they did that with Batgirl, that was, like, the biggest one. Well, this one's close, because I don't know what they made for Batgirl. Yeah. But the the budget was pretty comparable. Like, this is the budget $70 million. Batgirl yeah. Batgirl was, like, in, like, an $80 million movie. So they probably... So I guess with this one, they're probably going to get, like, $30 million back. So probably equal, probably pretty equal. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's the thing. They're, they're going to throw away this film. Yeah. 
for a thirty million dollar return. <laughs> yeah. And it's like you don't think you can make thirty million. On yeah, this? especially this one because it's it's just a Looney Tunes, and a lot of people do like the Looney Tunes. So except I could, for Warner Brothers. yeah, except for <laughs> Warner Brothers and these four executives that didn't watch the movie. But I guess uh, yeah, there's that too. I know this this actually had a, this. They were supposed to can can this like a while ago. Mm-hmm. But I know a lot of people were complaining about it. James Gunn, I'm pretty sure, was pushing to them just like either like ship it off to someplace else. Yeah. To at least get it like shown in theaters or something. But I guess. They must have went through the 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 avenues and no one picked it up. Probably because it's like unreasonable amounts that Warner Brothers wants them to take the movie off them for that. Mm-hmm. So I guess they're finally coming up to this final decision. They're probably going to can this movie. Again. Well, yeah, again. <laughs> so I guess this happened in like the fourth quarter earning calls on February or some. It was pretty recently. There's a reason why it came up here. Mm-hmm. But I guess a lot of people in the actual movie industry is actually saying this is not, this is very anti-competitive and stuff like that, which it is. That's well, stupid. Like, who's going to want to work with Warner yeah. Brothers when they keep doing, this is the third time they've done yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like, it it doesn't even make sense. It's like, <laughs> it's like they can't, honestly can't think they can't make $30 million. And I think, what was it, what was it, what was it, I kind of looked a little bit about this up before we did this. Yeah. They were trying to sell the movie for like 80 million bucks or something. So yeah, this is, they, wanted, they were shopping it around for more than it cost to make. Yeah, more than it cost to make. So if they're going to make $30 million off of their financial reports by just right tax, why don't you just sell it to a company for $30 million then? That yeah. way it still gets released. I'm sure a company would buy it for that. Yeah. Because I think Netflix was really interested in it for a while, but they probably didn't want to budge off that number. I'm sure that's probably what it is. Probably. Or, or I think Sony was actually looking at it, too. I think, yeah, everybody was looking at it at some point. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah. And the only thing that kind of make, doesn't make sense, this is a James Gunn movie, and they just was like, we're just canning it. I'm... Yeah, I'm a little worried about James Gunn's DC Universe, to be honest. Yeah. Like, like I said before, what happens if uh, Superman Legacy tanks? Yeah. Because every DC movie has tanked. Yeah. In recent years, except for the Batman, but everything else has fallen apart in the Joker. Yeah. But um, like if that happens, is DC just done? Yeah, I think yeah, because I don't know. Because if James Gunn can't make it work, I don't think anyone can. Yeah, because you think Warner Bros. just sells DC. They probably they, will if they can't get that to work. Because I think DC. Actually, DC Comics in general mm-hmm. as has kind of been in a slump as well. Like everything, well, yeah. Whole not doing they just been in a slump. Like everything's just been in a slump. Dealing with like superhero type of stuff. Yeah. Which that always happens with that type of, at least that type of medium. It's always been like that. Like you get your your times when it's very popular and it kind of dies down, and then it's popular again. Mm. But it's kind of a. <laughs> Oh yeah, right here is it actually this part discussing films rejected offer from Netflix, Amazon, and Paramount, refusing to let them counter offer. So they didn't even they didn't let them in counter offer. They were just like no. Yeah, they gave them one option. Yeah, and that was it. That was your I was either my way or the highway. And yeah, they said they wanted seventy five to eighty. It's like Warner Brothers is the real Looney Tune at this point. <laughs> rejected offers from Netflix, Amazon, and Paramount. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it's like unreasonable. Like you said, they're trying to sell for thirty. They're trying to get a tax right yeah. off for thirty. So you, why didn't you try selling it for fifty or forty? Yeah, <laughs> or something like that. Like you're only going to make thirty off this, other than it's the sheer spite. Yeah, or the fact that they secretly are afraid that it would make the money back. Yeah, and then some other studio made that. Money. Yeah, they're going to make more money than they think. That's probably what it is. They probably say if we sell for thirty. And let's say it's a big billion dollar hit. Yeah. That means they just lost on it. <laughs> well, yeah. If they're a screwed, lot of them. Yeah. And that probably is not good for the shareholders and like, stuff. Like, it's not, I don't think it's going to make a billion. But, no. like, I don't know. It depends on what this movie's like or something. This could theoretically hit a hundred million or something. It's an animated film. Yeah. Well, man, semi-animated. Semi-animated with the Looney Tunes. That's pretty, that's pretty well recognized. I know, say, I know a lot of people know about the Looney Tunes. They like, actually like the Looney Tunes. Well, yeah. I mean, they're not, they're a pop culture like staple yeah it's every bit as important as uh the the disney cartoons that disney ignores all the time yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah exactly they, they ignore mickey mouse and everything because they hate yeah. him 
Except for when somebody else makes something with yeah. it. And they're like, oh, we own that. We got copyright strikes up everything. Yeah, they'll strike, they'll strike everything, but they won't make anything with the characters. Yeah. But this is a very... I, this premise here is very unique, though. This it's is actually pretty really funny. good. It reminds me... It's almost like a Phoenix Wright. Yeah. Or a Harvey Birdman, attorney at law type thing. Yeah. Like, I can definitely see this being pretty funny. Yeah. And I guess the only thing that... I guess the question it does bring up is... If this is, like, the way movie studios are going to do it nowadays, is that, like... Is that a new trend that's going to happen? Or is it something that's going to be, I like... I mean, I think it is a trend now already. Yeah. Because, like I said, this is the third time this studio has done this. Yeah. And I could see maybe uh, well, Disney the, that doing that. that we know it. of. This is the third time with a major film. Yeah. They've done this. They've done this way more than three times. Yeah. But <laughs> this is... This is for major films. Like, yeah. 70 million plus films. They did this with Batgirl. They did this with a random Scooby Doo movie. Yeah, and then now they did it with this. It's like that's that's kind of it. It doesn't make any sense because I guess like older movies, sometimes you can make a, a premise that's like kind of outrageous. Yeah. But let in the long run, it's it's a good movie. It comes out and people just like it. Mm-hmm. And you're just like shutting down movies all the time or just canceling movies i guess right well you don't even know what you're gonna get. yeah you're right? not you don't know what you're gonna get you're not Some, gonna see what the, see the future is gonna hold with that movie there's certain movies that everybody thought was gonna fail yeah and then they ended up being these massive hits yeah that nobody like i don't think anybody expected barbie was gonna be the hit it was yeah uh i know for a fact that people thought jumanji was gonna be trash yeah <laughs> and then it ended up making like, like a, tons yeah, of yeah billion dollars almost almost a billion yeah, yeah. So, you never know what's going to be the yeah. big thing. Yeah, and if Warner Brothers had it, they probably would have canceled it. Warner Brothers probably would have <laughs> shelved it, yeah. Yeah, instantly. But it was Sony, so Sony will put any old piece of crap yeah, out. Sony's, <laughs> yeah, Sony's the place that's like, they just do everything. They Sony's about to release Madam Web, so yeah, they have to... no shame. <laughs> yeah, they just, <laughs> they do everything. But, and I guess this is, it's just, it is kind of sad that it's about these writers and stuff, and I guess that's part of the reason why the writer strike and stuff happened. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's because you're literally just throwing these people's ideas and visions in the trash. Like, literally. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've made the movie. It's done. You're like, just release the stupid thing at this point. They can't even get it out. Because yeah. it says that if, as soon as they make this decision, they're going to shelve it and delete it. Yeah, just so delete it. It's going to cease to exist. So they're going to just throw it. Not in a vault. They're just going to, like... They're throwing it in the recycle bin. Yeah, recycle bin. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and letting them turn the key to, have it to destroy it, I guess. Great. But it's it's just kind of well, like I guess that's the one one reason why I brought it up is because I guess is this like a worrying trend in the movie industry or do they it's almost like it needs to have more like independent studios at this point yeah to, so because I don't I know an independent studio probably won't ever do that well that's what I was hoping would happen during the strikes but I guess yeah didn't <laughs> yeah I guess they just did whatever and I I could see like Disney doing something like this in the future well Disney has almost done that. Oh, actually, Disney probably has done. This. Yeah, I just never said they anything. They got close to doing this with Willow, because they oh, released yeah. Willow for like a year and then they took it off the service. Yeah, they did release it though, so it is a little bit different. But and let's so. say like, I know Paramount wants to merge with Warner Brothers or whoever that one company. Why would they do that? Yeah, that's. <laughs> So you're gonna have Warner Brothers that just deletes movies, and they're gonna merge with Paramount just to delete more movies. They'll delete their Star Trek movie. Yeah, the, Star Trek's not deleted. <laughs> they'll accidentally delete it. Yeah, like, whoops, we forgot it. Whoops, I guess we're not releasing that. Yeah, I deleted it, and then I just put a magnet onto that hard drive, so now we're going to use it again. <laughs> it's like, what? You should have done that. But That's how Warner Brothers works. Yeah, that's how, that's, how we, that's how we be bussing. <laughs> no cap. Yeah, no cap. All right, but, so moving on to the video game news. Yeah. We'll leave the vi- the movie news in that note, I guess. Yes. Okay, so the first one we have here is uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Order Veterans Unite to make a new JRPG with highly eight highly customizable characters and gorgeous hand-drawn la- landscapes. So it's called Lost Helden. That would be great if they put the title of the game in the title of the article. Yes, they don't <laughs> They don't care about the there title of the article. There are several articles that are like that. Yeah, they just don't yeah. say anything yeah. about it. <laughs> So this is made by a Canadian developer, Art- Artisan Studios, which I... Oh, they made Super Neptuna, which I've heard about that game before. Okay. So uh, apparently they have Final Fantasy XIV and Gravi- Gravity Rush Artist, Takeshi Oga, which if you look at the actual trailer, a lot of these character designs definitely look like something from Gra- Gravity Rush. Yeah. And also they have... Uh, 
the composer of Final Fantasy XII and Tactics Ogre, Hitoshi Sakamoto, is like handling the music and sound design. So those are your your Final Fantasy Tactics Ogre people. But it kind of looks interesting. The story does kind of sound interesting. Where apparently people have like seven sins before their first birthday and they have to fight against those urges or they apparently they lose their mortal soul or something or something like that. So Yeah, and the, there's two twins and one loser has all the sins. Yeah, the, <laughs> the other one none. So <laughs> we, we sucks play, to be yeah, you. Yeah, sucks to be you. You can't do anything because you're not going to get that immortal soul if you do. Yeah. But I got, it looked interesting. Like The trailer actually does kind of look interesting. Yeah, it does look interesting. It's sort of like a who's who of former Square employees yeah. or something. And I always like I always like games with like hand drawn backgrounds and stuff like that. It's always like that type of stuff. So yeah. Okay, so the next thing we have here is uh, another indie game. I guess is uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven meets Resident Evil in a new horror game you can play now on Steam. So it's like a demo mm. for it. So it's called Hollow Body, which is another one that didn't show what the actual name of the yeah, game is. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is. Like, why don't they have the article, the titles in the article? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It just literally just put it somewhere. So this game looks like Silent Hill Two. Like at yeah, least the I was first just gonna trailer. Say, like this article is hilarious because it's like, oh, this is Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven meets Resident Evil. Yeah. And then they they like name drop every horror franchise ever. <laughs> yeah. So Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Fear Effect, and Parasite Eve. All happen all at once. It's like. It just looks like Silent Hill. And also, it feels like Alien Isolation. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like that. everything's in there. It's every every horror movie they could, every horror game they could name, they just threw in there. Yeah. So, it did look kind of interesting because it kind of, like I say, it does look very similar to like the apartment building from Silent Hill Two. So. Yeah, I guess they're saying it's like 1980s Britain. Or yeah. Something. So it's like a tech noir survival horror story. So. So 1980s Britain looks like Silent Hill. Yeah, Silent. It looks like Silent Hill, <laughs> pretty much. But I, it did. It did show a couple like the, uh, like when you talk to someone, it had like a little. Uh, it kind of looks like that thing with the implant, and you kind of can read it, scroll down. So it kind of looked pretty interesting. Mm. But it it looks d- decent enough. It's a. You can play the demo on, I guess, Steam or something. Wherever this, I'm not sure where you can play the demo at, but you can play the demo somewhere. Probably Steam. Somewhere. Probably Steam, but we'll see. Yeah, it does look interesting. Yeah. And then the next thing we have here is from Software's parent company, so Katakawa. So they own Gamera, I believe. Yes, they own Gamera. <laughs> so they apparently own so- from Software, which I didn't realize they own that. When's the Gamera game coming out from, yeah. from Software? They're gonna, Gamera's going to be an Elden Ring too. Gamera, Elden Ring. Yeah, which they did. They did talk about later on in this article, which I can read here. And then uh, apparently they have acquired acquire so acquired acquire okay which they make Octopath Traveler two which that's a pretty decent game yeah Octopath Traveler one and two because I played both of them and they actually are really good mm-hmm. and I guess they want to strengthen to create IP in games as part of our game business strategy so they owned so I guess they must have bought them out from Square Enix or something I don't know if, I thought Square Enix owned acquire but maybe they just kind of worked with them. They must, yeah. They must have been like a separate entity yeah. that was just working. With like them. the publisher might have been Square Enix, yeah, but the choir was the actual. Maybe they don't have the rights to Octopath Traveler. Yeah, but they have the studio. Yeah, that must. That probably is it. It's sort of like when Xbox bought Rare. Yeah. Hopefully, they didn't buy it with the intent of getting Octopath. Traveler. Yeah, and they're just like, whoops. Sorry. Just like Xbox did. When they... <laughs> they thought we had Donkey Kong, but and nope. Like, nope, that's Nintendo. <laughs> But they said that they want to have synergy with our existing game-related subsidies. And that makes me think that they probably want to start making, like, adding things from, like, like Gamera. And putting, like, a boss or something in Octopath Traveler 2 or 3. Or maybe, like, put Elder Ring and have Gamera, like, show up and you fight him or whatever. They're going to create, like, a multi-versus fighting game with, like, random crap that Katakawa owns. Yeah, there we go. (laughs) That might be a... (laughs) <laughs> that might be what they want to do. Warner Brothers fail this week. I know we don't have an article about it, but just in general. Yeah. The fact that Multiverses was like released two years ago as like a beta. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then they took it from everyone. Yeah. And then they still haven't released it. And there's only like 12 playable characters or some crap. Yes. It's like, this looks terrible. And I... one of them's Velma. Actually, what they could possibly do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which that one, like, that was during that time when everyone, like, hated Velma. 
Well, yeah, because they Max had that stupid Velma show that nobody liked. Yeah. It. But this is traditional Velma. But even yeah. so, why would you pick Velma in a fighting game? Yeah, I know. Where's Shaggy at? Shaggy's in there. Oh, is he in there still? Yeah, okay. But that's like broken. He is Ultra Instinct. Yeah, he's Ultra Instinct Shaggy. You need to have like Superman to fight him. Yeah. Actually, the other thing that kind of uh, I could see maybe if, if From Software is owned by Catacow, they could probably make like a Kaiju Bloodborne, like a Demon Souls Kaiju game. That would be. If cool. they really wanted to. Yeah. Because Gamera is like way. I don't know. Gamera has, even though it's the friend of all children, yeah. he does have a tendency of being darker than Godzilla in a lot of ways. Yeah. Which is bizarre, but when you dig into it, it kind of is. Like the current manga that they're doing that's the prequel to the anime. Yeah. It's like basically Resident Evil. Like pretty much the premise of Resident Evil. Like they're just creating bioweapons and having them fight each other to collect battle data and stuff. Yeah. Like the basic idea for Resident Evil. And the the violence factor is so much more extreme in Gamera than it is in Godzilla. Yeah. Like the kaiju are dying, like, Mortal Kombat fatality style. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting off limbs and everything. Yeah. So, it's it's pretty wild. I mean, I guess the legendary monster verse does that, but... Yeah. Even so, the Gamera stuff's still more brutal. I mean, there's, like, organs and stuff being shown. Yeah, that would be kind of so, interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's especially in that manga that's currently out. I mean, it's pretty gruesome at times. And if I guess if any if they were to put it in an actual game, that would probably be the character to use. To be honest, like if they were to make like a, a kaiju game, especially since Godzilla's screwing around when it comes to games. Yeah, they haven't put out anything Godzilla related in years. He keeps showing up in like dumb. He's Indian a tank games. or whatever, or like like a battleship or yeah, something. He's a battleship. He's riding on top of a ship. Yeah, for some weird reason. He's in Call of Duty. Yeah, so for some weird reason. For some reason. But, but we'll see. Well, I guess it's like it's interesting. I didn't realize the choir. I didn't realize the choir was actually its own company, but yeah. But I guess Katakawa is starting to like get into the gaming industry now. Okay, so the next thing we have here is Resident Evil Four. So, some good news for Resident Evil 4. So, it sold over well over 6 million copies. And actually, it's coming out with the Gold Edition this week. Which, uh, it's basically the game plus the extra DLC. It's, like, all combined all together. Yeah, which I know a lot of fans of Resident Evil, at least on Facebook, were really yeah. pissed about for some reason. Because I guess they don't understand what a Gold Edition is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like, it doesn't have anything new. And it's like, it was not for you. It's for no. people that didn't buy the game yet. It's for people that they want people to sell it to. And they don't want to wait and buy everything separate. Right. Which I guess you probably could tell. I'm assuming the way they have this next. The, the, these two articles are combined together. So. Yeah. Because the, the other article is Resident Evil is actually getting four of his remakes getting a price drop. So the yep. base game is getting a price drop by like $20. Mm -hmm. So it's making it $39.99. And then the Gold Edition, I'm assuming, is going to replace the price of the original. Yeah, it's probably like 60 bucks or something. So it depends on what the the DLC mix, mixes up with it. So I'm assuming it's going to be more expensive if you just buy the DLC separately. Yeah. But just buy the Gold Edition, just get everything. So whatever. Yeah, the Gold Edition must be like 50 because yeah. otherwise, if you just bought this at forty and then got the DLC separated, it'd be cheaper. Yeah. Than the gold edition. Yeah. So yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. What? Which I don't know. Did they do that with Village? They did the gold edition. I think so. I'm pretty sure they did with Village because I think that's when they had the like winter expansion or yeah. whatever with his daughter. So yeah, I think they did the same thing with that. I wonder if they did they lower. I'm assuming they lowered the price for. Uh... Probably the other thing too is that. Capcom has sales, like, all the time. Yeah. Like, almost every time I check the store, Capcom games are on sale. Actually, I, I just went a little bit further on this article. It's forty nine ninety nine for the Gold Edition, so okay, it is $10 yeah, cheaper. So that makes sense. So you're actually getting... It's better just to buy the Gold Edition than just the base game, even well, though it's... if you've never bought the game before, then yeah. Yeah. Actually, it probably costs about the same, to be honest. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's just if you want it in a bundle or if you want it separate. This also, I think... Isn't this the one that the physical copy is only in Europe or something? I think so, probably. Because they always talk about digital storefronts here, so... Yeah, I think there was some reveal that the physical copy for this would only be released in Europe. Yeah. So, like, Japan and America have to download it. Yeah, we have to only to download because no one here wants to have physical media for some reason. I but... guess. So. <laughs> but, uh, well, there you go. You can buy the physical copy of the original game and just get the DLC. Yes. And forget the gold. 
edition. Yeah, forget that gold edition. It should have added more. It should have added other stuff should to it. Should have added a Luis campaign. Yeah, Luis campaign or a Salazar campaign. Salazar. <laughs> that dog. Yeah, that dog campaign. That dog should have got its own campaign. We needed that, but... Oh, well. Well, we can never have it, I guess. No. And the next thing we have here is another Capcom thing, but they seem like they do this all the, kind of like all the time. Not really all the time, but periodically. Is they ask players what they want in sequels. Do they want a sequel of Okami, Dead Rising, Mega Man? I'm assuming they probably had Dino Crisis in there. Yes, I Ghosts guess IGN's Goblins. a Mega Man fan because they just said Mega. Mega, <laughs> just that's it, Mega. <laughs> Great. But uh, here, maybe I'll just open up the website real quick just to see if it actually tells me. Uh, uh, you have to make like a whole thing. Okay, that. never mind then. It's like you have to make like your own avatar. And all this crap. Okay, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I did do it. So there's, yeah. So here's a few of the things they asked. Um, Dino Crisis, Okami, Onimusha, Dead Rising, Dark Stalkers, Breath of Fire, Mega Man, Ghosts and Goblins, and more. I think they let you choose. Like, three. Three of them? Okay. Yeah, if I remember right. I mean, it's almost unfair to put Resident Evil Monster Hunter, because you know those games are going to come out. It's like, well, that's why, I did, yeah. They did it's like they put it in there. But. Yeah, they were on the list, but, like, I didn't say it because you know they're happening. Yeah, it's I, like, we know that's going to happen. I think I did Onimusha, Dino Crisis, and something. I can't remember what the other one was. I would like uh, definitely Dino Crisis, Breath of Fire for me. I want to put Mega Man on, but I know Mega Man's like almost like a tired franchise. <laughs> I don't think yeah, they could really do anything else with it. There's also a chance they would make a Mega Man game anyway. Yeah, I think they did. I did. I think I remember someone saying something they wanted to kind of go back to their roots, and Mega Man is always Capcom's roots, right? Because that's and they their keep first really big game. Collections of Mega Man. So yeah. At least they're releasing something. Onimusha and Dino Crisis haven't got jack shit yeah. in like yeah. <laughs> years. Dino Crisis hasn't got anything. Yeah. Onimusha, the first game got a re-release on the Switch and other consoles, but it's literally just a port. They didn't do anything to it. And Ace Attorney, they have like those those bundle packs like quite a bit with, yeah. lately with that. Yeah, one. Ace Attorney is like Mega Man. They yeah. have re-released all that. Yeah, they had like and the ones that weren't released here. Even the here. Japanese ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so, like, those are, they're still loved, they just don't have any new games coming out. Yeah, so those are probably, if you, if you, if people use their wallets, that probably votes much more better than this, <laughs> this survey is ever going to be. Because if, if, like, let's say, on, or, like, let's say Ace Attorney comes out. Yeah. And it gets, like, six million copies. I'm sure they're going to make another Ace Attorney game after that. Yeah. But, but, yeah, yeah. it's... I wonder. I kind of wonder what the results are, but I don't think there is like. I don't think they probably will never show what the results actually were. Because I think the last results was Dino Crisis was like the number one game. Yeah, they just didn't say. They just didn't make it. Still, they're like, here, play this other dumb dinosaur game we made. Yeah, play this other one because everyone hates Dino Crisis. Dinosaurs fall out of the sky. Yeah. It um, I guess got a hundred thousand responses. That's a lot. Oh no, that was some other survey. That's not, okay. So a different survey. But yeah, they're they're talking about I guess companies do this all the time. So Embracer Group did the same with Legacy. Okay, yeah. Pain. Wonder what the results for that was. That yeah, might have been the hundred thousand results. Probably. Because I, I haven't heard anything about a Legacy of Kane remake or sequel or whatever. No, so. and I know that's a game that it has is pretty well received when it came out because they had like yeah, three or four of them. That's like a PS one era game. Yeah, PS one, PS two, I think. Like, come, it's like it went from PS one to PS two, but yeah. But yeah, I'm kind of curious because Ghosts and, Ghost and Goblins did come out. That was one. Yeah, that... they did just have one recently. Yeah. Which we'll probably have to play someday. So yeah. The Courageous Fright. Yeah, because that's like our reason why we got our name from that's that. our name came from that. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be interesting. But yeah, if Onimusha would probably get the franchise. Darkstalkers. That one, it's a fighting game. Yeah. But I don't know if as many people have that's fun memories. This is popular but yeah which i think i had the figure over there but yeah the, that character <laughs> morgan is a big popular character but that's like the only thing i know about that franchise yeah that's like the one of the actually that's one of the first major fighting games that came out mm. from capcom and the breath of fire is a is an is like their rpg yeah which i like breath of fire sequel but there hasn't been really a sequel since like five and that was on the ps2 yeah so i don't think it really hasn't 
been a new one since then. I mean, they brought it on like the the virtual console and stuff, or the uh, the whatever the online thing is for Nintendo. They have one and two there. Yeah, and you can buy three like on the system. Oh, can you buy three on there? Yeah, because I think I have one, two, and three. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. I probably should get that. I didn't realize you could buy three because three is, yeah. I think, considered like the best. Yeah, I think three is just available for on the store. Yeah, I have it for PlayStation One. <laughs> but I don't know about like the one after that. I don't think they're available. Yeah. But, yeah, three's on there, and one and two are on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Console. So yeah, if that were the case, yeah, I guess Onimusha would probably be one that they really should do. Yeah, they haven't done anything with Onimusha since like two thousand five. Yeah. So. Yeah, because that's the one that says like a. It's almost like they should just revive the franchise at that point. Oh well, they did that anime, but it's like barely has anything to do with it. Yeah, I and I guess we didn't even know that it even came out until yeah, it, it was like, like stealth did. dropped. But uh, it came out in November. I still haven't watched it, but yeah. I heard it had barely anything to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably just trying to do something different, like probably to like Castlevania, which yeah, is like they do the same of. thing. <laughs> yeah, sort of. It's like they had some things, and like that's it, but. But the next thing we have here are some rumors that are coming out. Actually, the next couple ones are rumors, actually. So the PS6 rumor is actually coming out. Already the PS6 rumor, which I guess they did have on when the Microsoft did their like their law thing. And one of the court documents did say that earliest for PS6 would be 2027. Yeah. So that's a couple more years from now. But that, that could probably change any time, but... Uh, and according to this article, I guess they're going back. They're going to continue their partnership with AMD, so they're going to power the PS6. And also, they were talking about the PS5 Pro is supposed to be coming out again mm. with beef up internal, which PlayStation is known to do that, so that's not yeah. like anything. Yeah, they do all the time. Yeah, so. There's and I guess. Slims and all of yeah, that there's stuff. Slims and everything else, so. So I guess that's an interesting that they're kind of continuing on with AMD. I know Xbox, there was an Xbox rumor that. Xbox was kind of looking to see if they can get someone else to do their processing power, like maybe like Intel mm -hmm. or something. And maybe they haven't really focused on AMD yet, but there's also other rumors that they might not even be making consoles anymore either. But I we'll digress about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to bring that up because that, I guess PS6, no shocker here, that might be coming here pretty soon. So Yeah, we knew a couple years. We kind of knew PS6 yeah. was going to happen. So. Yeah, so like, it's not really a shocker, but I guess we'll see if. How they're gonna do it? Once more of the con like more of the stuff that they're gonna still continue with physical media or yeah. whatever, which we we talk about. Game. Yeah, eight K gaming, a sixty FPS. So, can anybody even see eight K? <laughs> <laughs> Get that eight K gaming. I don't even think there's really eight K TVs out. Yeah, because those like, how many people can even tell the difference between eight K and four K? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, at a certain point, it just they're it's yeah. too minute for the eye to even notice the difference on some of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> But, so, and then the next one here is the Xbox thing, which we've talked about Xbox before last week about, like, a can kill console, but there's some little bit more information about that leak, or, like, the rumor that's coming out. Yeah. So, they, apparently they're going to have two different SKUs. So, one's going to be the cheaper one, which is going to be, like, a Switch-like handheld, mm -hmm. which that is, kind of makes sense. So, it's going to be, like, some cloud gaming and play Xbox games. So, if that's the case, it's probably going to be a physical, or, like, a digital-only console at that point. And then they're going to have it like well, a... Well, it probably would have to be because it's going to be discs. Yeah, they're going to have no discs on that. <laughs> and then the next one they have is like an actual console itself. So it's probably going to be like your home console type of thing that yeah. just plays like games. Yeah, unless all of them are just digital. Yeah. Because it is Xbox. They're most likely to go fully digital. Yeah, so... Like I said, there, there has been a couple leaks before about Xbox possibly... Uh, which is our next article is coming up. Xbox possibly going multi-platform with a lot of their games. Yeah. Because this week in particular, they're going to be doing like an Xbox, like an emergency meeting, to try to explain what their future of Xbox is going to be. Mm -hmm. Which that could be either bad or good. I know a lot of people were not happy about that leak or that <laughs> leak that came out. Yes. But you never know until the company actually announces it. So that's always the, uh, take these with a grain of salt, I guess. People like smashing their Xbox. yeah, smashing their Xbox. They're saying like Xbox is done and everything else is like because we don't know. The Xbox gamers might be the most stable. Yeah, most stable of, of gamers there is. Yes, but but like the next one, like I guess the next article here is about like PS Five, like Indiana Jones, Starfield, PS Five reports that they might actually become multi-platform. So Bethesda, two major Bethesda games. 
which would make sense because there was another report that Starfield lost 95% of their player base. So if they if they brought PS5 into the mix, I'm sure their player base would go up, which that's well, yeah. the goal of the company, I guess. Yeah. And also Indiana, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, they never actually explained what console that's going to be to. Yeah, so, I think they just kind of implied that it was PC and an Xbox, but they never really said that it was, I think, exclusive. Yeah, they just showed it and just kind of showed a picture that's coming. Yeah. I think a lot of people are assuming that it is, but... Xbox has said before that they are picking and choosing which games are going to be multi-platform. Yeah. They didn't say they're going to be specifically Xbox only, but there are some games that are going to be and some games that aren't. And I think the two big games that they're talking about recently is Hi-Fi Rush, which is a pretty big game for Xbox, mm -hmm. and also Sea of Thieves, which is another pretty big game for Xbox. That are this one I think is pretty. I think these are actually real. See if these and High Five Rush are probably going to go to PlayStation or and probably Switch or something. So, but like I said, you want to keep these with a grain of salt because you never until they say something, it's not true. Yeah, it's definitely so, a rumor. Yeah, it's definitely a rumor. And then the next one I have here was um, Phil Spencer was coming out on Twitter to say, "Look forward to our state of play or whatever." It's an emergency meeting, explaining what the future of Xbox is going to be throughout this week because of what people have been doing like people are like destroying their consoles and stuff about these rumors it's like don't destroy your consoles just yet <laughs> why would you destroy your yeah anyway? like, that, yeah it's, it's like real extreme that would be like when sega announced they're making any more consoles and everybody just yeah people just their dreamcast rko yeah rko their dreamcast <laughs> out a window i don't think that happened yeah it's like <laughs> yeah exactly so it's kind of a it's really strange to me but I guess gamers can be quite passionate, I guess you can say. Yeah, <laughs> if that's the one term way, for you. One yeah, way to put yeah. it, yeah. But we'll see if what what they say they're on this week, so we'll probably have it reported when we do our next probably next week. Probably by next week we'll find yeah, out. Yeah, we'll something. find out and over, we'll talk about it, but we'll see what they actually mean because they could it could just be nothing. It could be like, oh, we didn't mean, like, that's just a leak. <laughs> Yeah, or they just don't or, do anything. They say they're going to do it, and they don't do anything at all. They're going to come out just to say they're going to lay off another 900 employees. Probably. That's the future <laughs> of the company. Yeah, we're just laying off people. Yeah, we're, we're firing, firing everyone. people from other companies we don't even own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I saw a choir was made from the kind of We're just firing their employees, too. It's like, what? You don't own that. Yes, we do. <laughs> Okay, the next thing we have here is the Mario news, which is actually pretty decent. Mm -hmm. It's Super Mario RPG has, re has actually surpassed the original game's lifetime sales. So they have sold 3.14 million units on February 6th. This is when the other article came out. Yeah. Which the original sold only 2.14 million units, so exactly a million units. That's pretty good. Three million units in three months? Yeah, as I said, yeah, six weeks. So that's actually... Three months. Two, yeah, months. two months. That's pretty. That's a lot that's of sales. That's a lot because it was Resident Evil Four just did six million, and that's been out since March. Oh, yeah, so that or must May have people must really have just bought this game up. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. But I mean, it's not surprising that it beat out the first one. I mean, the original yeah. game was only ever released on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, and only in two markets. Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> it's, it's like Super NES did that. Continues to amaze me that it never was dropped in Europe. Yeah, well, that's surprising. It was only Japan and the U.S. And it's that's still actually still pretty surprising. In Japan and the U.S. alone, it was still 2.14 million units. Yeah, for a Super Nintendo game. I mean, people buy way more stuff now. Yeah, that's a access. lot at that time frame, and like in that year more when it came out. More means of doing it now. Yeah. Then because you didn't have Amazon and stuff back then. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't just order it online, have it shipped to you. Yeah, so, you had to go to like KB Toys or whatever, or right. like, or I don't know, like. Toys R Us or, or something to buy things. your games at that point, but I never. There was actually another thing on this. It's like apparently Mario Kart Eight Deluxe surpassed sixty million units. That's a lot. But is there that many switches out? <laughs> like people just well, the switch is like one of the top selling consoles. I think yeah. that's the next story. Actually. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Mario Kart Eight. I guess that's a lot, but it's not surprising. Yeah. That, that is the game that has that because they released continuously released all those. DLC racetrack. Yeah, that I think Mario Kart Deluxe has been around since the Switch first. Is that like a launch game? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it came off the Wii U. And yeah. They 
upgraded it, but it's got everything. I guess Minecraft is getting Godzilla. Is that <laughs> showed up that? as an ad <laughs> online? It's yes, like another dumb franchise for Godzilla to be. In. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not surprising that if any game was to get that many sales, it'd be Mario Kart yeah. because they put all that. DLC in there. Obviously, there must be a bunch of people playing the game. Yeah, Mario Kart. I know when we play, we played it online a couple times, and it's like it's it gets pretty. The matches get pretty full pretty quickly. It's not like you're mm. waiting. Yeah, there's a lot of people on there. We'll have to do that again. Yeah, later. that's a good game. Yeah, Mario Kart Eight is really good. Yeah, I used to play Mario Kart Eight with uh, some friends back in Japan. Yeah, did Mario Kart Eight and Smash or like the yeah go to games that everybody plays. That's the one thing Mario. That's the one thing Nintendo does well is those party games. They, like, kill it with the party games all the time. Yeah, Mario Party also. Yeah, Mario Party, Mario Kart 8, Smash. Those are games you can just play like, friends. And then the last couple ones, like, the Mario Party game, they just, they, well, not just released, but recently-ish released. Yeah. And the Mario Kart game are, and Smash, really, are cool because they released kind of, like, the ultimate version yeah. that is, like, what are they going to do after that? Yeah. Because the Mario Kart and... Mario Party games are all, like, the most recent one has everything there's ever been yeah. basically worked into the game. Yeah, especially Mario Kart 8, because they just re redone every, like, all the levels into the new graphics and everything. Yeah, they pretty much did that, but then the most recent Mario Party had ma had boards and mini games and stuff from, like, every game in the franchise. Oh, is that what they did? <laughs> yeah. it's I mean, it's not every single one, but they have representation, I think, of every yeah. game somewhere in the most recent Mario Party game. That's pretty crazy. So it's another, like, greatest hits yeah. kind of thing. It's like this console has just been, like, the greatest hits console. Basically. And it's like a restart or Smash something. Smash kind of did that, too. Yeah, with Ultimate. Because they keep adding people, and they haven't really taken... I can't remember if they've ever taken a character away. Is there anybody in Ultimate that wasn't... No, I think that one was everyone. Like, from the whole franchise, yeah, from beginning like, to end. Yeah, I don't think there's one that you have to play Brawl to play yeah. this guy. Yeah, because I, I think they really want to just have everything in it. Which can't be said for... Yeah. Nintendo, or Nickelodeon also. Yeah, Brawl. Nickelodeon also just takes people away. Or I think the second game has less <laughs> players than the first game. And actually, Smash did a thing that people would think that would never happen. Like, Sora was in it and everything. Yeah. And that's like, that's something people didn't think was going to happen, but it... Multiverses, again. Trying to compete. Yeah. Yeah, multiverses trying to compete and they can't. It's like, come on. But... What are you doing? Yeah, sma yeah multiverses, when they had it in the beta or whatever, there was only like 20 yeah. or 16 playable characters or something. Yeah. There's like 80-some playable characters in Ultimate. It's like, <laughs> get out of here. You're not yeah, I know. It's like nowhere near. I guess that's like uh, that's like with Mario Kart. I know we we did like a rumor like a long time and we brought this up. I guess they were thinking of possibly because there's like like I said, there's really nowhere else you can go. Mm -hmm. And I think they were saying something about maybe doing crossover like with other Mario or, like other Nintendo worlds and stuff. So you have like F Zero levels. Well, they, yeah, they could do that. I mean, if they, they really brought Link to. into it. Yeah, Link, you have Hyrule. So they could do that. I maybe guess. just have another section with Link, or maybe like a like a. A Metroid Link's, level or something. Link's stupid motorcycle. Yeah. Or of the Wild I want or... his B-52 bomber. <laughs> That's what I want. There you go. <laughs> Just bombing up goblins in the background, nice. I guess. That's the way but, to do it. But it's kind of, this is a pretty good news. Like, that's pretty quick. That's a really quick sales figures for that. Yeah. But, and then the next thing we have here is also more sales figures. The so Nintendo Switch is finally considered the best selling hardware in Japan. So they have sold. Apparently, DS is the is the highest. So DS used to be the biggest in Japan. Mm -hmm. So they sold thirty three million in Japan alone. So the DS is at uh, one hundred fifty four million for the worldwide, and the Switch is only at one hundred thirty nine million. I can see that being overtaking them. Yeah. But the only thing is, like, if they were to announce saying Switch Two is supposed to come out this year, which that is a rumor. I'm assuming the sales probably would stop after that, but because people probably want to wait for the Switch 2 to come out. Yeah, but my question to that, though, is the DS just the regular DS? Or is it, like, every version? Probably every version. I imagine, because I can't imagine the regular DS at 154 million units. Right. 
Well, it's probably true of the Switch, too. Yeah. Because there's three Switches. There's Switch, Switch Lite, and the OLED Switch. Yeah. So, yeah, it's probably all. Yeah, it's probably all combined, which, that is kind of, that is pretty crazy. Yeah, this one says, uh, total of 32 million units with all three SKUs. So, the original OG Switch, Switch Lite, and Switch LED model. Which is, a uh, that is a pretty big, that is a pretty massive feat. Until they make... I guess they haven't beat... I don't think they beat the PS2 yet. Because that is considered like the top-selling console of all time, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And they're probably not going to beat that, but... I think the PS2 was out for like a very long time, though. It like didn't get off shelves after like... <laughs> yeah. Because PS3 came out in like, I think, 2010 or something. It was like not that long ago. I may have like before that, but... Not 100% sure. And then the last thing we have here is some Switch 2 backward compatibility reports. So there's like uh, another rumor that a lot of the companies are actually testing the backward compatibility just to see how the compatibility actually works. To see if it's like physical, digital, or not at all, I guess. If Which, they're testing, then there must be some yeah. level of compatibility. If they're testing it or unless they... Because I, I know Switch is, or Nintendo's always said they, they don't bank on it being... Backward compatibility, compa backward compatible. But Nintendo's track re record has always been the previous generation is what they actually have backward compatibility for. Right. With the exception of maybe like SNES and the NES, but that was before that was like even like a thing. Well, none of the consoles are backwards compatible yeah. until the Wii. Yeah, the Wii. But uh, the handhelds are all backwards compatible yeah. for one generation. So, like, Game Boy Advance plays regular Game Boy. DS plays Game Boy Advance. Yeah. 3DS plays 2DS. Um, yeah, and, and then, then Wii played GameCube. Yeah, Wii played GameCube, and then Wii U played Wii games. Yeah. And I don't think it... I think it probably... I don't know if it played GameCube games, too, but I don't think it did. Probably not. And then the Switch wasn't backwards. Yeah, backwards. Switch is... But it has, like, the uh, online store, but... The only thing I, I gotta to say too much. is I hope Switch Two is compatible, fully backwards compatible. But yeah. if it's not, I hope at least the online stuff crosses over. Yeah. Because that's gonna be real annoying if I have to wait like three years for the NES online console yeah. to get Eliminator Boat Duel back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life if <laughs> I mean obviously I still have the Switch, but yeah, you know. But I'm going to destroy the Switch when the Switch 2 comes out. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> like, that, yeah, I forgot that's what we do now. Yeah, I just destroy it. Throw it in the garbage, the dump. Smash cool. the screen. Roll it over with your car. Don't bother, like, trying to sell it. Yeah, don't try to sell it. Just destroy it. <laughs> so no one can use it. But... <laughs> but That's the Warner Brothers way. Yeah, Warner Brothers way. So, it's kind of a... I Hopefully, it's... It would be a very big misstep from Nintendo if they were to not acquire backward compatibility for the Switch 2, or whatever it's called. Yeah, I think that would be kind of stupid. Yeah, but... Because Switch Unless it's so drastically incompatible. Yeah, so drastically incompatible with each other. <laughs> Unless they do something like, they make the Switch 2... Yeah. And it's not the Switch 2. Yeah. And they keep the Switch on as the handheld system. How they could possibly do that? Where it's like the new console is actually like a PS5, and then the Switch stays on as like the 3DS. Yeah, or something. that probably they probably could do that. And then they just never update the Switch because it's just a handheld. Yeah, it's just a handheld that people have. They so, could play on a TV. <laughs> I guess that would be about the only time I would see not doing backwards compatibility. Like I said, there was those rumors too about Nintendo. Charging people for backward compatibility for some reason. How, how is that going to work? I don't know how it's going to work, but <laughs> put your quarters in, I guess. You get a quarter. You basically have like a, a slot machine thing you can put next to your console. You can put a dollar in to play your game. Yeah, they keep paying quarters. In. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and the real console ex or gaming, yeah, like real arcade arcades. experience with your game console. Yeah, but, so if this claim is true, then obviously there's some kind of backwards compatibility because otherwise, what are they testing? Yeah. <laughs> Let me test to see if this goes in. Oh, there's no slot. Uh, I guess it doesn't work. Unless they, unless they only do like digital only or physicals, not like back compatible or something. Maybe. But that might be the only other option. <laughs> yeah. But I would say at the very, very least, 
it needs to carry over the digital. So yeah. Like your, your, all your information that's on your Switch, like whatever's on your account. Yeah. Should transfer to the new console. Yeah, I do agree with that. Especially the online crap. Like if you're having online, like Super Nintendo Online or whatever, that better transfer over and not start again. Yeah, start trash. again. You have to get. That's gonna be so stupid. Super Mario World again for oh, number boy. one. Every like month they give yeah. us a new game or something. Or now they just don't give us new games at all. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they, they, they do occasionally. We got Golden Sun. Yeah, that's true. Recently, we got like Jet Force Gemini like two months ago yeah. or something. But it's pretty... That's like a trickle. Yeah. There's not much at all coming out, so... Which I guess the that was one other thing with Nintendo. They did say that they want to keep that service. So hopefully well, that good. is a good thing because that's like that's got to cost them a lot of money to keep changing your infrastructure every time. <laughs> it's like let me just change my infrastructure again because we can't keep the backwards compatibility or something <laughs> or yeah, whatever or like getting a new online service. But, yeah, I don't know how they're gonna not do that. Yeah, I, mean, I think that would be a pretty big misstep. Yeah, but All right. see, yeah, that looks like that might be. Yep, I think oh. that's gonna be it for this week of the Courageous Fright. So if you like this video, hit that like button. Let us know in the comments what you want us to talk about or cover or yeah. what you liked about this video, what you didn't like about the video. Uh, you, like, again, you can guys can all fight it out about uh, Gina Carano yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell those comments. We'll, we'll pay attention to any comment as long as it's not, like, just a bunch of political yeah. or whatever. Because we try to avoid that here. Yeah. So, other than that. Stay tuned for another couple more videos coming out and next week's news. And you too can feel the strong swelling within. See ya. See ya.